All right, welcome to another episode of Stan's Hall. It is August 8th. We're going to start with a reading from Sun Tzu's The Art of War, chapter 8, verse 8. If our expectation of advantage be tempered in this way, we may succeed in accomplishing the essential part of our schemes. Which follows up in the translation, they take the previous day, number 7, and remember we read them both together. Therefore, the considerations of the intelligent always include both benefit and harm which translates from sevens yesterday, hence in the wise leader's plans, considerations of advantage and disadvantages will be blended together. As they consider benefit, their work can expand. As they consider harm, their troubles can be resolved. If our expectation of advantage be tempered in this way, we may succeed in accomplishing the essential part of our schemes. Ho Yan Chi says benefit and harm are interdependent, so the enlightened always consider them. Yeah, I mean, again, known unknowns, all of that stuff. And if you're going to temper your expectations to that, yeah. So basically he's saying always include both sides, benefit and harm, good, bad, right, pros, cons. As they consider benefits, their work can expand. As they consider harm, their troubles be resolved. So like if our expectation of advantage be tempered in this way, if you can look at both sides treat them interdependently, and then attack from the strategies you see thusly, then that is what he's saying. And so let's go over to the Daily Stoic. Thank you to Ryan Holiday and Stephen Hanselman for this BA book, badass as heck book. And we're going to go over here to August 8th, which I already like the title. Start with where the world is, a reflection from Marcus Aurelius. Do now what nature demands of you. Get right to it if that's your power. Don't look around to see if people will know about it. Don't await the perfection of Plato's Republic. But be satisfied with even the smallest step forward and regard the outcome as a small thing. Marcus Aurelius, Meditations 4. Do now what nature demands of you. As soon as I read that, I, I paused and thought of Ray Dalio Principles and his book and how if you observe nature and how he talks about that for the natural order of things. And I'm pretty sure the perfection of Plato's Republic refers to the utopian aspect of, of it. Um, take that for what you will from Marcus. I think it's all pretty clear what Mr. Aurelius is saying. So, regardless, don't wait for perfection. Take the smallest step forward. Even the smallest step forward. That is, that is essential in any journey, whether you're just now starting to go to the gym, your career, a transitioning career. Just because some people it takes a long time doesn't mean your small step can't lead to big strides. And so, use everything combine it, utilize it, and just always celebrate the small wins, especially if you're doing it from the stoic mindset of it's your duty uh, to do. Okay. Have you ever heard the expression, don't let perfect be the enemy of good enough? Yes, actually, um, I, I've heard that recently from, from a guy I was doing some work for. Yeah. And uh, the idea is not to settle or compromise your standards, but rather not to become trapped by idealism. A community organizer, Saul Alinsky, opens his book, Rules for Radicals, with a pragmatic but inspiring articulation of that idea. Remember, August is all about pragmatism. As an organizer, I start from where the world is, as it is, not as I would like to be, like it to be. That we accept the world as it does not in any sense weaken our desire to change it into what we believe it should be. It is necessary to begin where the world is if we are going to change it to what we think it should be. There is plenty that you could do right now today that would make the world a better place. There are plenty of small steps that, were you to take them, would help move things forward. Don't excuse yourself from doing them just because the conditions aren't right or because a better opportunity might come along soon. Do what you can now, and when you've done it, Keep it in perspective. Don't overblow the results. Shun both ego and excuse before and after. I mean, what are you waiting for, guys? Like, let's get out there and attack this. Okay, but as far as from a teaching perspective, the little things add up. Just because 
your neighbor chooses, I, I, let's just say recycling, and we don't have to go into a huge metaphor here, but the more people who poo-poo it, the less people are taking these small steps. And recycling is good. We know it's good. It's not on a massive scale, but if we do it and we emulate as people the society that we want to live in and then create, those people will then go and thus work for corporations who may or may not have good green initiative programs like recycling and things. And guys, I mean, I don't want it to turn into a debate about climate change, but we have the technology to save our planet. Let's just make sure that we as the people are the ones in control of that process and not the corporations that we vote with our dollar and give our money to. Again, all of this besides the point, The let's tie it back into the art of war. If our expectation of advantage be tempered in this way, we may succeed in accomplishing the essential part of our schemes. Duty, right? Pragmatism. If we're pragmatic, if we take into account the pros, the cons, the goods, the bads, right? All of the advantages and disadvantages of both sides of the situation. And we know that all of these things are these variables. And if we're kind of playing 3D chess with the situation, then as long as we don't over, I mean, it's like, it's kind of like, it kind of builds on it, right? And it gets to be this like complicated system of ethics and morals. But the point is, I think the point is really is like, you know, Marcus, he, he meditated, he, he, he did these journals and he wrote these thoughts down. And I think a lot of people do that. And now, of course, you know, nobody is making it as big as Marcus, right? Maybe one day, you know, someone's journal will be discovered and, and it would be like, you know, some, some big name. Um, but it's always, it's always the striving. It's always the, the admittance of of responsibility of one's failures that that inspires people with Marcus is not that he was a Napoleon Bonaparte. It's because he was a regular man who had regular thoughts and wrote them down, and we can all read those and associate with them. And not only can we relate with the general failures of a human that long ago, they're still failures of humans today. And here's a guidebook on how to overcome that and how to keep to keep moving forward and taking the small steps. And as you take small steps, you, you look around and you take more small steps and you look around. And this is, this is the art of war. You know, this is why we stand tall.